Exposition by Charles Hedden Spurgeon 1 Chronicles 21, 7-30, 22 Chapter 21, 7 And God was displeased with this thing. This numbering of Israel which David had carried out in spite of Job's protest, God was displeased with this thing. 7 to 15. Therefore he smote Israel. And David said to God, I have sinned greatly, because I have done this thing, but now, I beseech you, do away the iniquity of your servant, for I have done very foolishly. And the Lord spoke to Gad, David's seer, saying, Go and tell David, saying, Thus says the Lord, I offer you three things, choose one of them, that I may do it to you. So Gad came to David, and said to him, Thus says the Lord, Choose you either three years famine, or three months to be destroyed before your foes, while that the sword of your enemies overtakes you, or else three days the sword of the Lord, even the pestilence, in the land, and the angel of the Lord destroying throughout all the coasts of Israel. Now therefore advise yourself what word I shall bring again to him that sent me. And David said to Gad, I am in a great strait, let me fall now into the hands of the Lord, for very great are his mercies, but let me not fall into the hands of man. So the Lord sent pestilence upon Israel and there fell of Israel seventy thousand men. And God sent an angel to Jerusalem to destroy it, and as he was destroying, the Lord beheld, and he repented him of the evil, and said to the angel that destroyed, It is enough, stay now your hand. See the power of the mercy of God. Even when the angel has drawn his sword and is already executing the Lord's just judgments, God's mercy interposes and holds back the blade of death. Should we not love the Lord for his great long suffering toward us? He has not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. 15, 16 and the angel of the Lord stood by the threshing floor of Ornan in the Jebusite. And David lifted up his eyes and saw the angel of the Lord standing between the earth and the heaven, having a drawn sword in his hand stretched out over Jerusalem. Then David and the elders of Israel, who were clothed in sackcloth, fell upon their faces. This was the very best clothing and the very best posture for men who were under the chastising hand of God. They had put on sackcloth and they had fallen upon their faces. O oh guilty sinner, if God's sword of vengeance is drawn against you, you cannot do better than put sackcloth upon your soul, if not upon your body, and prostrate yourself before the Most High. 17. And David said to God, Is it not I that commanded the people to be numbered? Even I it is that has sinned and done evil, indeed, but as for these sheep, what have they done? Let your hand, I pray you, O Lord my God, be on me, and on my father's house, but not on your people, that they should be plagued. Here we see David at his best, and what a true patriot he is. He interposes himself, willing, rather, that he should be destroyed than that the people should die. This was the spirit of Moses when he said to the Lord, If you will forgive their sin. But if not, blot me, I pray you, out of your book which you have written. And this was the spirit of Paul when he wrote, I could wish that I, myself, were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. There are times when our great love for others will overflow all bounds of moderation, when we shall say, and say from our hearts, what we would not have dared to utter in cooler moments. 18-27 
Then the angel of the Lord commanded Gad to say to David, that David should go up, and set up an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Ornan in the Jebu site. And David went up at the saying of Gad, which he spoke in the name of the Lord. And Ornan turned back and saw the angel, and his four sons with him hid themselves. Now Ornan was threshing wheat. And as David came to Ornan, Ornan looked and saw David, and went out of the threshing floor, and bowed himself to David with his face to the ground. Then David said to Ornan, Grant me the place of this threshing floor, that I may build an altar there into the Lord, you shall grant it to me for the full price, that the plague may be stayed from the people. And Ornan said to David, Take it to you, and let my lord the king do that which is good as his eyes, lo, I give you the oxen, also, for burnt offerings, and the threshing instruments for wood, and the wheat for the meat offering, I give it all. And King David said to Ornan, No, but I will verily buy it for the full price, for I will not take that which is yours for the Lord, nor offer burnt offerings without cost. So David gave to Ornan for the place six hundred shekels of gold by weight. And David built there an altar to the Lord, and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings, and called upon the Lord, and he answered him from heaven by fire upon the altar of burnt offering. And the Lord commanded the angel, and he put up his sword again into the sheath thereof. See what was done by David's intercession and sacrifice. And remember that there is a greater David who, with a richer sacrifice and mightier intercession, sheathes the sword of God, so that his people are spared. 28-30 At that time when David saw that the Lord had answered him in the threshing floor of Ornan in the Jebu site, then he sacrificed there. For the tabernacle of the Lord, which Moses made in the wilderness, and the altar of the burnt offering, were at that season in the high place at Gibeon. But David could not go before it to inquire of God, for he was afraid because of the sword of the angel of the Lord. Chapter 22, 1 Then David said, This is the house of the Lord God and this is the altar of the burnt offering for Israel. From that moment this place was set apart as the site of the future temple and the center of the hopes of the people of God. And, dear friends, what better site could have been selected than the spot where the angel sheathed his sword, where prayer was heard and where sacrifice was accepted? And now, today, you and I have only one temple, and that temple is the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, the well-beloved, for in him the sword is sheathed. In him the sacrifice is accepted and in him intercession still prevails. 2-4 And David commanded to gather together the strangers that were in the land of Israel and he set masons to hew worked stones to build the house of God. And David prepared iron in abundance for the nails for the doors of the gates, and for the joints and brass in abundance without weight, also cedar trees in abundance, for the Zidonians and they of Tyre brought much cedar wood to David. See, a great deliverance brings a great offering. Because God had bid the angel sheath his sword, there is to be a temple commenced and David is busy preparing for it. O you who have been saved from death and hell, what can you render to God for all his benefits toward you? 5. And David said, Solomon my son is young and tender, and the house that is to be built for the Lord must be exceedingly magnificent, a fame and of glory throughout all countries. I will therefore now make preparation for it. So David prepared abundantly before his death. If he might not build the temple, he would, at least, gather the materials for it. So, 
let us try to do all we can in the cause of God. There is said to have been a king who felt so grateful to God for some special favor that he determined to build a great temple and pay for it all himself, no one was to help at all in it. One night, in his dreams, he was told that the honor of building the temple would not belong to him as he desired, and he thought within himself, to whom, then, can it be? for I have not allowed any person to work for me without full wage and I have done it all. At last he discovered that there was a poor woman in his kingdom who also loved his God and, not daring to help in the temple building, she had brought little handfuls of hay to give to the horses that had dragged the stones, so hers was to be the greater honor. If you may not do all you would, do all you can for God will accept it of you if it is rendered by a willing mind and a loving heart. 6-9 Then he called for Solomon his son, and charged him to build an house for the Lord God of Israel. And David said to Solomon, My son, as for me, it was in my mind to build an house to the name of the Lord my God, but the word of the Lord came to me saying, You have shed blood abundantly and have made great wars, you shall not build an house to my name because you have shed much blood upon the earth in my sight. Behold, a son shall be born to you who shall be a man of rest, and I will give him rest from all his enemies round about, for his name shall be Solomon, that is, peaceful, or peaceable. 9.14 and I will give peace and quietness to Israel in his days. He shall build an house for my name, and he shall be my son, and I will be his father, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. Now, my son, the Lord be with you, and prosper you, and build the house of the Lord your God, as he has said of you. Only the Lord give you wisdom and understanding, and give you charge concerning Israel, that you take heed to fulfill the statues and judgments which the Lord charged Moses with concerning Israel, be strong and of good courage, dread not, nor be dismayed. Now, behold in my trouble I have prepared for the house of the Lord an hundred thousand talents of gold, and a thousand thousand talents of silver and of brass and iron without weight, for it is in abundance, timber, also, and stone have I prepared, and you may add thereto. At the very lowest calculation, David had laid up eighteen millions of money for the building of this house for the Lord. It was an enormous sum and he must have been long in saving it, yet he gives Solomon leave to increase it, you may add thereto. I like that way of putting the matter. And when some of you see good help rendered to the cause of God by others who are able to do more than you can, do not, therefore, say, I need not give anything, but remember what David said to Solomon, you may add thereto. There is room in the treasury of God for your might as well as David's millions. 15. Moreover there are workmen with you in abundance, hewers and workers of stone and timber, and all manner of cunning men for every manner of work. God will always find the right man in time for his own work. In his church there are all manner of cunning men for every manner of work. 1619. Of the gold, the silver, and the brass, and the iron, there is no number. Arise therefore, and be doing something, and the Lord be with you. David also commanded all the princes of Israel to help Solomon, his son, saying, Is not the Lord your God with you? And has he not given you rest on every side? For he has given the inhabitants of the land into my hands and the land is subdued before the Lord and before his people. Now set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord your God. 
Arise and build the sanctuary of the Lord God, to bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and the holy vessels of God, into the house that is to be built to the name of the Lord.